Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. How many guys ready for Super Bowl Sunday? I see a bunch of red shirts in here. How many Chiefs fans do we have in here? How many Brady fans do we have in here? Nobody? How many Cowboys fans do you have in here? They're not in the Super Bowl, folks. Okay? I don't know how, when they're going to be in one day. I pray by the grace of God. Little Johnny found some, got some Super Bowl tickets. He got two tickets on the front row, the Super Bowl, Tampa Bay Buc- Buccaneers and the Chiefs. And he invited his friends. So his friends were there on the front row. And man, they were awesome seats. And the friend goes, man, these are awesome seats. Where'd you get these tickets from? It was all from my brother. He goes, man, that was nice. Well, where's your brother at? He's back at home looking for his tickets. <laughs> but that was cute. So the series uh, that we're going to begin today, Pastor Joel is going to finish it for the next three weeks, but um, it's, it's t- we're talking about more than words, how your words matter. Your words have power. I don't know if you realize that or not, but there's a summary that we wrote on here, and there's a summary there on your deal. Most of us speak 7,000 words per day. Let me just, most of us men speak 7,000 words per day. Some of us speak more, some of us speak less, but are your words truly communicating what you want them to say? Words can heal, words can harm. The right words in the right tone in the right time at the right context can bring hope to a hurting world. Words have power. So let's talk about how we can use your words to bring life and hope. Let's make sure our words are more than words. That's the summary of this whole series, and I think it's going to be beneficial uh, for all of us. So let's go ahead and pray. Is that all right? Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the opportunity to share the word of God. And we know that uh, the words that you speak to us and you've given to us is not only just so that we can read, but so that they can read us. And so this morning, I just pray that our ears are open to hear and just like a baby bird, ready to be fed by your spirit. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. You're the instructor here. So we just lean into you. I pray in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said, amen. Amen. I can't think of a better time to talk about how our words matter. In the season that we're in right now in our country, in the world, and in our nation, if you're paying attention, I don't know if if you realize it or not, but the media is playing a big role in how you're thinking and sometimes in how you're feeling. Do you realize that? Uh, I mean, listen, how? By the words that they use, by the words that you're constantly hearing. When all you hear is how many people are dying, when all you hear is how big the giants are in our land, when all we hear is how difficult it is to overcome, you know, the pandemic and overcome a virus and overcome our economy and overcome, uh, you know, the, 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 the Kansas City Chiefs or whatever, when all we hear is that, then, you know, it's going to affect our lives, isn't it? Words are containers. Say that. Words are containers. They're containers. They contain either blessing or curses. Blessings or curses. The words you hold, the words you have hold immense power, whether we realize it or not. They have the power to fuel your confidence and ambition. I mean, if you think about the words that you speak to yourself, or, you know, Danny sent me a text yesterday, and the words that he spoke really helped me and encouraged me and empowered me. The scripture says that um, the Lord God Almighty, he's given us the tongue of the learned so that we can have a word in season to them that are weary. Amen? Amen. And so, so sometimes people talk themselves out of encouraging or being a blessing to other people. Oh, I don't know what to say. No, the Bible says that the Lord God Almighty will give you the tongue of the learned, the tongue of a disciple so that you know and you have a word in season to those that are weary. Amen. What are you going to believe? Your words that say, I can't, or the words that come from God's word that says you can. The words have power. They have the power to make you a strong first impression if you're going to an interview, or have the power to be quickly forgotten, Mm. right? They have the power to create opportunities for your life in your near future. The words that you use will also have the power to shut those opportunities down. There's a saying that says this, the words you speak become the house you live in. The word, I, in other words, I say it this way. I say, you create your world by the words you speak. You can create your own world. It doesn't matter what's going on around here, but when I speak the words that, I, that are coming from in here, it, will not, you know, it might not change the stuff that's going on out here, but it gives me peace on the inside. 
You can create your world by the words that you, the words that you speak. John 6 says it this way. Jesus said it. He says, every word that I speak to you, it's a spirit word. It says, the words that I speak to you, they're spirit and they are life. The Message Bible says, every word I've spoken to you is a spirit word, and so it is life-making. It makes life in your life. Jesus said it this way. It is written, remember when he was tempted by the devil in Luke's gospel, the fourth chapter, and he tempted him with bread? It really wasn't a true temptation because if he would have been, because Jesus was Spanish, and if it would have been a true temptation, he would have tempted him with tortillas, Okay. <laughs> But Jesus, nevertheless, Jesus said this. He goes, hey, listen, it is written, man shall not live by what? By bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Man shall live by the words that come out of the mouth of God. Last night I was at dinner with my wife outside, and the Spirit of the Lord said, look up that word life. And so I looked up that word life, and you know that word life is where we get the word biography from? In other words, it means that it's the narrative of how you spend your life. And so so the storyline of your life, the storyline of your life will reveal one of two things. Either how much dependence you had on natural things, on, on natural nourishment, or how much dependence you've had on God's word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So you and I need to pay attention to words. Why? Because words matter. They matter. Amen. Today, we are looking at um, the title. This morning's subject is called The Tongue. Oh, man, I forgot. I bought a big old $30 lingua cow tongue. I forgot to bring it over here. <laughs> anyways, I was occupied. <laughs> I was going to go fishing with that thing. But anyways, um, I'm going to talk about the tongue this morning. And so, so just pay attention, all right? Proverbs 18th chapter says this way, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. There's a master who sent his slave out to the market with strict instructions to buy the best meat from that market that they had to offer. So the servant goes to the market, he comes back and he uh, holds and gives him a tongue. A cow tongue. Then out of curiosity, the, the, the master sends a slave back to the market. He goes, now I want you to go and find me the worst piece of meat in that market. So the slave goes out there and he buys the worst piece of meat and he comes back with a tongue. And so he goes, hey, what is this? When asked to explain about the discrepancy, the servant said, the market told me when the tongue is good, it is the best meat. And when the tongue is bad, it is the worst meat. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Let's talk about the tongue for a little bit. We first learned about the tongue early on in our childhood. If we went to the doctor and the doctor put that thing inside of our mouth and he says, what? Stick out your tongue, right? I don't know if you know this or not, but your tongue can give clues to the doctor about your overall health. Don't look it up. You can look it up. There's all kinds of diseases. There's all kinds of stuff that they can detect based upon your tongue. Infection, stress, uh, medical issues or medications that you've taken, and even how you know your aging process can all be detected by them just looking at your tongue. Well, the same is true uh, spiritually as a pastor. I don't know about you, but you know that I can learn a lot by what's coming out of your mouth, what's coming out of your tongue, the words that you're speaking. You know, you have an insecure disease, right? You have an anger ache. You have a fear fungus, So I always listen to the words that I speak, listen to the words that my wife speaks, listen to the words that you speak as we're talking, because our words identify where we're at or what we're dealing with sometimes. It it identifies our spiritual health many times, amen? Amen. The second time we usually learned about our tongue is probably at home with our mom and dad. When they tell you, boy, you better be quiet or I'll wash your mouth out with soap. You remember that? Anybody do that? Anybody get that done? You, Manuel? Really? That's crazy. Or if you don't have anything good to say, don't say what? Anything, right? And so we learned that right away. Now, I was threatened by that, but dad's here, and I never got that. I'm sure he wanted to do that, but I never got that. And of course, he couldn't catch me anyway, so I was gone. And usually as you grow a little bit older, another time that you learned uh, about the tongue, and I won't focus on this, but it's whenever you got a girlfriend or a boyfriend, and you wound up 
They're saying, hey, do you want a French kiss? They're like, what? I'm, not a Me- I'm a Mexican. I'm not French. What is that? And they wind up doing that kind of stuff and your mouth's all wet and all full of saliva and stuff. So it's like, anyways, not to camp on that, but we've learned a lot about the tongue. So, but let's talk about what the, the scripture says about the tongue. Can we look at that real quick? Listen to this. There is one who rash, whose rash words are like sword thrust, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Amen? The tongue of the wise brings healing. Go ahead, next one, Mike. Whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. In other words, if you refrain yourself from just saying whatever you want to say, Delilah. <laughs> She's all, what? The next one. James says it this way. No human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Poison can come out of our tongue. 1 Peter 3.10 says, For whoever desires to love life and see good days, students, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. You want to have a good life? You want to have a successful life? You want to have, you know, blessings? It says it's directly connected to your tongue. Now, James, the brother of Jesus, had a whole lot to say about the tongue, didn't he? Let's look at that real quick in James 3, 2 through 10. It says, we all fail in many areas. Everybody say amen. But especially with our words. Amen, amen. Right? <clears throat> I don't know about you, but man, in marriage, that is the most common. Am I right, Bill? Natalie's in with the children, so I can't say anything, but she will tell you. That is the one thing. We do marriage counseling. We do a lot of stuff, but our, this thing here gets us in a whole lot of trouble, doesn't it, Cordero? <laughs> we all fell in many ways, but especially with our words. Yet if we're able to bridle the words we say, we are powerful enough to control ourselves in any way. And that means that our character is mature and fully developed. So he does give us a clue here that even though the script says we, no one is able to take the tongue, he says that as we grow in character, as we grow in integrity and grow in godliness, we are able to control that thing and keep it in submission, right? It says horses have bits and bridles in their mouths so that we can control and guide their large body. And he's just giving different pictures right here. And the same with mighty ships. Though they're huge and massive, they're driven by fierce winds, yet they're steered by a little tiny rudder in the direction of the person at the helm. It says, and so the tongue, even though it's a small part of your body, yet it carries great power, doesn't it? Just think of how a small flame can set a huge forest ablaze, and the tongue is a fire. And it can be compared to the sum total of wickedness and is the most dangerous part of our human body. So we need to t- pay attention to our tongue, right? It corrupts the entire body and is a hellish flame. It releases a fire that can burn throughout the course of human existence. Our tongue has the power in it to corrupt the rest of our life if we're not careful to control it. Amen? Amen. It goes on to say, For every wild animal on earth, including birds, creeping reptiles, the creatures of the sea, and the land have all been overpowered and tamed by humans, but the tongue is not able to be tamed. It's fickle, unrestrained evil that spews out words full of toxic poison. Powerful. We use our tongue to praise God, our Father, Sunday morning, and then turn around on Monday through Saturday and curse the person who was made in his very image. (laughs) Isn't that the truth? Out of the same mouth, we pour out words of praise one minute and curses the next. My brothers and sisters, this should never be. Man, let's just go home now, right? It's a lot, a lot more passages I could bring to you, but today I just want to focus on Proverbs 18, 21, where it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now, when you take a look at that passage in Proverbs 18, it's really in the context of relationships because he's talking about strife and contention and strife with other brothers and what have you. And it says that you will be filled, you will produce, you will yield in life what is directly based upon the words that you speak. In other words, the crop that you yield is totally connected with the, the words that you communicate. And it's a powerful statement. And sometimes we don't pay attention to it uh, enough. 
One of the best illustrations that I can find uh, in Scripture that he just brought to my attention is the one in um, Exodus where God delivers the children of Israel out of, his, you know, out, of, out of Egypt and he sends them over to the promised land. You remember that story? Yeah. This, this week I would encourage you to read Exodus 13 and 14 and just to look at the big picture of this content and the context of what he's talking about here. But God is sent, well, right here in, Exodus, in Numbers, the 13th chapter, it says, And the Lord said to Moses, Send men out to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am what? Giving, giving to the children of Israel. He's giving it to them. He's already promised that he was going to give them the promised land. Am I right? Yeah. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. And so God delivers them out of Egypt. He goes into this journey to get them into the promised land. It's really an 11 day journey and it winds up taking them 40 years because of their mouth, because of their murmuring, because of their complaining, because of them wanting to go back to what was before and just a lot of nonsense. Just read the whole deal. It's really, really interesting. But before he sends them into the promised land, he says, I need, there's 12 tribes, was I need one leader from every tribe to go out and spy the land. And so they take the leaders. Now think about the leaders. These are the heads of the household, the, 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 the leaders over. There's over a million plus people there. So 12 men go out there, the leaders of, of, of those tribes, they go out there and they go spy out that land to see what they see and come back and give them a report. And so those 12, they go out. And 40 days, they're out there, 40 days of intelligence, of work. They're out there working, and they bring back a huge cluster of grapes. They, they notice some giants. They notice some other things, and they bring back a word to Moses and Aaron and to the whole congregation. And the 10 spies, there are 10, and there's two that believe the report of the Lord that God's already given it to, the, to them, so let's go in and take the land. Two of their names are what? Do you, anybody remember the names? Caleb and Joshua. Joshua and Caleb. Dan's been in school already. But it's Joshua and Caleb. Does anybody remember the names of the ten? <laughs> Nobody does. Your name is likely to be remembered if you side in with God and his word and speak those things that are true and honorable and you're siding in with God's word. Amen? Amen. You never remember those people that, that fail in their walk with Jesus. You usually focus on those ones that have gone through. So ten of them bring a bad report. And only Joshua and Caleb bring a good report. The 10 look at that land, and yes, it has great clusters. It has, it's beautiful and everything, but they see giants in there. It's like, oh, man, there's a pandemic in here. There's a virus here. We can't overcome that. Out of one million Israelites that Moses led out of Egypt, only two, say two, two. only two from that generation, Joshua and Caleb, entered the promised land. That's good. Yeah, that's good. That's right. Out of over a million only two of them entered. Yep. You know what that tells me? That only a few get this. Yeah. Only a few get th that words matter. Good. Only a few get it. Facing giants in your life will separate a leader from a grasshopper. Yep. Yep. Amen? Amen? And so we have to get it, especially in the season that we're in right now, fellas, guys, friends, brothers and sisters. The season that we're in right now, it is so vitally important for us to side in with God's word. <clears throat> it's not if you get bit, it's when you get bit. When you get bit, you look up and keep your eyes on the cross. Keep your eyes on Christ. There's, there's only two times when you are really going to get attacked and get tempted and get in a trial. It's when you're walking in the will of God and you're, you know, pursuing God's will, trials will come because he's trying to steal the word away from you. Or when you're not walking in it. <laughs> trials will come to every single one of us. Right. What we say, how we speak, who we side in with, will determine whether or not we'll have victory or defeat. Amen? Amen. Yes. I mean, think about this. Over a million people were there, and only two entered into the promised land. Forty years, they went around because of their murmuring and their complaining because of their mouth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
But Jacob, I mean Jacob, jo Caleb and, and uh, what's the guy's name? Joshua. Joshua, sorry. I'm thinking about Tom Brady. Uh, only those two guys sided in with God's word and they're the ones that made it, right? Deuteronomy, the first chapter, it, it, it starts revealing in different passages of scripture how the, the words, the report that came from the 10 spies, how it impacted the whole generation, that whole, the whole millions of people. It says in Deuteronomy 28, it says, the, the brethren, the 10 brethren discouraged their hearts. There's another passage in Joshua 14 that says, nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. In other words, when they spoke of the giants in the land, when they spoke of all the negative things, it, the courage of the people failed. But it was only Caleb who spoke the language of confidence. He says, man, let us go up at once. I see the same things that you see, but I know, and I'm siding in with the covenant that God has with us. Amen. And he says, let us go up at once. We are all well able to overcome it. Why did only two men out of a million enter into the promised land? Why? Because words matter. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Amen. They were leaders, they were respected, and so what they were saying Man, just preoccupied their minds so much that they failed to enter in and failed to look and hold on to the promises of God's word. Two of them focused on the covenant. The other, ten, the other million actually focused on the words of 10 cowards. The 10 compared the giants with themselves and the giants appeared large. But Caleb and Joshua compared the giants to God and the giants were cut down to size. All of them were influenced by words. Why? Because words matter. Amen? Yeah, amen? Guard your hearts, guard our hearts against toxic, poisonous words. We can't control what other people say. We can't control what you're hearing, but we can control what we believe. Yeah. We can keep the poison out of our hearts, right? Yeah. Uh, the scripture says, pay attention to what I say, Jesus said. Uh, pay attention to what I say. Above all else, guard your heart, because out of it, are the wells of life. It says, guard your heart. In Ephesians, the fourth chapter, it says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. I love that, according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Are you guys listening out here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> It's just the pastoral teaching, but it's just a, a groundwork. Then Joel's going to come in and show you how about your tone and all these other things. He'll give you the practical stuff. And I'm just going to share what the Bible says. And he's going to share what the Bible says too. Um, parents, we are prophets, whether we realize it or not. Our words become self-fulfilling prophecies especially when our kids were being raised in our home. You know, my dad was speaking to me uh, as I was growing up. I was playing ball with him. He would play catch with me, and we would have fun and stuff like that. But the words that he used, he didn't even know the impact. The words he was using and the words I was hearing were two different things. He was saying, you can do better. And I was thinking, I'm not enough. And all he was saying was like, hey, get back in front of the ball. You know, get in front of the ball. Now, I'd get in front of the ball, it hit my lip. He goes, that's good. He goes, but you can do better than that. Don't let it hit your lip. Catch the darn thing. <laughs> Dang, I can do better. And so the words, so as parents, for those of us who have children, teenagers, you don't have children yet, you want to have children, let me encourage you to think about what you say to your children. We have to be careful not to curse our own children. A lot of times the words that we use, man, make a huge impact in their life for the rest of their life. And so we have to be careful and watch the words. There's this book called The Power of Positive Prophecies. And, it, and it's a guy by the name of Michael. It's a story by the name of Michael. And I don't know if you heard this before, but let me just share it with you. Michael says this. It says this in his book. It says, I grew up an alcoholic in an alcoholic household where I never heard a positive word. On my way home from school, I would say, always stop at Jimmy's. Jimmy's was a local dry cleaner store because he kept candy on the counter. And he got to know me, and he told me one afternoon, Michael, you're a very smart boy. Someday you're going to run a very big business. And I would listen to him in disbelief, 
because I would return home only to get called a dog and get knocked around by my dad. But you know, Jimmy, the dry cleaner, was the only person that he could remember to ever believe in him and ever speak good words over him. Today, Michael runs a multi-million dollar healthcare organization, just like Jimmy predicted. And so I guess you could say that as a dry cleaner, the dry cleaner was a prophet in his life. The people that you have in your authority, those, let's say you have a business, let's say you have a home, the people that God has allowed you to speak into, you're a prophet to those individuals. You're a prophet, sir, to your family. You're a prophet to your employees. Speak life. Encourage them. Elevate them to tens. Speak as if though they're tens, even though you feel like they're just, you know, turkeys, chickens, whatever. And you watch them elevate. Amen? Amen. 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 And so I want to encourage you folks, pray for me. Pray for me. I need your prayers. Pray that pastor has a word in season, that he's not up there just saying jokes. That he's not up there just messing around or doing church or whatever. Pray that, Father, I need a word from my pastor. I pray that he has a word, that all of a sudden his whole message is destroyed and you just give him a word for me. Amen. 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 I need that. You need that. I need that. So many times I'm preaching up here and I'm just preaching to myself just to encourage myself in the Lord. If y'all get the leftovers, that's great. But I'm like, I got to get happy here. I got to encourage myself in the Lord. I'm always preparing with the, you know, for the believer, but I'm also recognizing that there's an unbeliever in this place here because I want to give them an opportunity to receive the greatest victory that ever took place you know, with redemption with Jesus Christ, amen, the person of Jesus Christ. Because he's, I don't know about you, but he's changed my life. And so this, this month, we're going to focus on words. And I want to encourage you to think about that. Do whatever you can to readjust not only your thinking, but your speaking. Amen. Bless somebody today. Before you leave, bless somebody. Encourage someone. Build them up. Doesn't matter how bad your team's losing. Strengthen them with your words. Amen. Amen. Let me spow our heads. Heavenly Father, we love you. God, I I pray for all of us in this place. If you're here this morning and um, that resonated with you, it's like, you know what? I need to pay more attention to my words. I need to be more kind with my words. I need to be more um, deliberate with my words, more focused with my words. If that's you this morning, can you just lift up your hand? I want to pray for you. If you you need some help. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I see all of you guys. So Lord God, you see by the acknowledging of our hands, Lord God, that we need help in this area. And I thank you that it's only the Spirit of God that can help us to control those things, to control our anger, to control the things that we want to just say and spew out. Because we can't never get those things back. It affects, it harms, it hurts people. I pray that you forgive us from the things that we've said in the past and that you help us this day forward to be more mindful of the words that we say and speak. So we just commit that to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Now, if you're here this morning, you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. You've never confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. You've never repented of your sins. You've never given your life to him to surrender your life to him. And you realize that this morning, you know what? I need to do this in 2021. I need to give my life and surrender my life to God. That's my only hope. If that's you this morning and you've never done that, but you want to do that this morning, I would love to pray with you. Can you just lift up your hand so that I can pray with you guys? Yes, ma'am. I see your hand. I see several hands here. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. Amen. Hey, say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of all my sin. Forgive me of the words that I've spoken. I can't get those back, but you can help me moving forward. I do believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sin, and he's given me a chance for eternity. Jesus, forgive me. Take my life from this day forward. I want to serve you with everything I have. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.